Hi guys, I hope you're doing great. It's been a while and I apologize for the lack of content on the channel. That aside, I want to talk to you about a tool I've been using for a while called CodeKit. And it's a fantastic application. And I've had a few friends of mine inquire about learning how to write HTML and CSS and how to set up a development environment to get started with that. And this is a great tool for beginners to get started, as well as it has some intermediate and advanced features as well. So without further ado, let's go check out this tool on the computer. Let's get started. All right, so... CodeKit, as I said before, is a great app for front-end developers and designers for compiling and building websites and to get started really quick. You can download a free trial of it at codekitapp.com. Their slogan is build websites faster and better, and I couldn't agree more. So what does this do? Well, it basically transpiles many languages from styling for like CSS, as you can see here. Sass, less, stylus to CSS. It also handles CoffeeScript and some HTML templating languages like Jade, which I think has been recently named Pug. So Slim and Haml it also handles TypeScript and ES6 transpiling for JavaScript and it handles Markdown, JSON and does image optimization. It's great. Uh, does a lot of different languages and is super handy. So uh, additionally, it also provides hot loading in your browser. So when you change code in your code editor, it just refreshes the page and you can see the results. It makes things very composable. You know, it's very, it's a very organic kind of process and you can really get into a flow very quickly. It's got browser sync out of the box. I'll show you how that works. It does minification, and it's got Bower built in, so you can install any of the Bower components that are out there uh, pretty easily. So without further ado, let's, let's just uh, let's explore this a little bit. I have a little project here I've already downloaded CodeKit. This is what it looks like. You can add a project or you can just simply drag and drop. So I'm gonna take this code and I already have a configuration file for CodeKit. It will create this for you. Um, but if you're importing a project already using CodeKit, if you're moving projects around or in a multi-developer environment, this file just goes with the project everywhere and auto configures everything pretty easily. So I will drag and drop this at this project. And this project uses a source in a build folder and you can go into the settings here and tell it that this uses a build folder. Tell it what the source folder and the build and you can apply and change any settings that you need so that it is fully aware that you're using this kind of structure. Let's take a look at the first feature I want to want to discuss, and that's just the hot reloading. We have this green button up here and we get these preview server addresses. This is a bonjour link. There's a non bonjour link and this Mac only link. I'm going to use the bonjour link. You just click on it, it opens up the browser, and this is what we have. So if I open up the source directory and open index.html, this is what we're seeing. It's just a very basic boilerplate index.html with some UL, with a UL and navigation elements, and just a title, a title H1 here. And as you can see, we can click through here. So I've styled these, or at least added classes that are bootstrap classes. So we're gonna add bootstrap to this later and I'll show you how that works. So we have uh, this index.html, we have a page2.html. And what happens is, is by default, CodeKit will just take the HTML files 
and compile them into a the build folder identical and just move them to the build folder as it goes through the transpiling process this page 3.pug this is pug uh, syntax or jade you may know it as jade um, this is what it looks like and when codekit compiles it it Spits it out as HTML, and this looks identical to the other pages. CodeKit uses a, you can compile a lot of different HTML templating languages. Pug is one of them. It's super slick and super flexible in that way. Now, um, let's see what else we can look at. Let's look at SAS. So I have a SAS file here, and I have commented out some of this code. I'm going to uncomment this title and we're going to make this home red. So what I can do is I can hit save, compiles, and refreshes over here. And if we look at the styles.css, which it transpiles to, we get our output and that works the way, way it should. Uh, let's see what else. It will do markdown. It will handle markdown. So I have a markdown file here. And if I go to code kit, I can tell it to output just regular mark markdown, just copy it into the build folder. Or if I want to do and make an HTML document, I can do that. And I can compile it. And so if I compile, I get a new file here called readme.html. If I want to take a look at that, I can go readme.html and I have this nice HTML document that was transpiled from readme.markdown. So pretty slick, handles a lot of different syntax. I'm going to go back to my code kit settings. I'm just going to copy this to, all right, cool. This file no longer exists. I get a 404. So here we are. Let's use Bower, the built-in Bower to install Bootstrap. We can just go down to this cloud icon and by default, you'll probably get this. This your favorites will probably be selected, and it will just look like this. And you can search like Bootstrap, and it will show up. And then you can install from there. I'm going to use Bootstrap SAS, and the way to get to that is I have to use the all components. This is giving me a warning. It kind of has a white list of of components that they recommend. Um, in this case, uh, we want to look through all components out there. And so it's giving us a warning. So if I do bootstrap SAS and search for it, I'm going, I'm going to install this bootstrap SAS with 11,671 stars. It does a weird thing here. I haven't quite figured out if there's a setting to change it. But as you can see, like it created a Bowers components folder, but then it copies the whole folder into the build folder, which is not what I want it to do. So in order to get around that, I can just click on the Bower components, set output actions, and just tell it to ignore. And we'll delete the Bower components out of the build folder. All right. I've got the import for this, for these style sheets for Bootstrap. And if I hit save, it should compile everything down into styles.css and we get our Bootstrap installed just like that. Super handy.
Okay, if you use a auto prefixer, uh, I've got good news. This does auto prefixing. So if you're using any CSS um, that requires specific browser prefixes to render correctly, uh, CodeKit can automatically do that for you. I'm going to comment out the bootstrap. And I'm going to re-enable this page wrap. This page wrap doesn't really do anything, but I'll show you in the compiled CSS what this looks like. Uh, I'll hit styles.css and we just get this, which depending on the browser, it doesn't, some do not know how to deal with this flex, display flex. So what we're gonna do is, if you go to your SAS, files and you say run auto prefixer on the css we can do that and it outputs the different prefixes that you need for the different browsers now there's a uh, global setting per project here that you can tell it which versions how many versions of the different browsers you would like to have it compile to it's all really up to you and what you need for the types of visitors that are coming to your site. So let's re-enable Bootstrap, make this look a little nicer. All right, there we go. CodeKit also handles images and does image optimization. So I'm gonna go to Finder here and I'll show you. I have in the source directory, I have an image and it will say, this is a 6.1 megabyte file. And after compiling, it's going to do its best to optimize. And it's gonna save, this file is now six megabytes. So it saved about 0.7% on, um, on the file size. Usually it gives a reduction um, here it does an estimate. I don't know why it's not doing that right now, but it's not. So it does image optimization and it's super, super slick. And that little bit, every little bit helps for front end. So <laughs> what else should we look at? Oh, um, one last thing. Uh, we have this massive CSS file because this has bootstrap and everything in it. So let's say we want to really build this for production. We can select SCSS and say the output style to be compressed or compact or expanded. Compressed is a minified version. So we're going to hit compile here and you'll see Atom editor re-output all of this stuff. So this is all optimized CSS or production. The minifying is super helpful as well. Now, one last thing, actually, I'm going to show you what browser sync is, and I'm going to do that by opening up the iOS simulator here. And this is a very handy, helpful feature which if you're familiar with Webpack and uh, Gulp or Grunt or any of those, um, those kinds of uh, compiling systems and code optimization systems, um, they're a bit tricky to set up. And one thing that's nice about them is that you, they're super flexible. You can really build anything that you want. And browser sync is always something that's a super handy thing to have in those. But it's, sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to set up. In this case, it's just right out of the box. As you can see, we have both pages loaded. But if I do a navigation on one, the other one works too. So this is great for testing on multiple devices. And this, this works more than just on one machine. If you opened your actual iPhone and you were on the same local network, 
you could type in this URL that you have in this in this area on your computer into your iPhone browser and this would all work exactly the same way. So it's really great for testing a behavior and media queries and functionality uh, across multiple devices all at the same time. And it's super handy. Let me know what you think. If you found some interesting ways to use CodeKit, I'd love to hear about it and what you think of it. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments or send me a message on Twitter. The code for this can be found on my GitHub. I'll be sure to leave a link to the repo in the sample site in the description below. If you found this video helpful, hit the thumbs up button. I'd really appreciate that. If you want more content about development and want to learn more, please feel free to subscribe and hit the bell to get a notification when I publish new content. Until next time, always be kind and always be learning. Cheers. Yeah.